so we wanted to create a little game review slash first impressions of multiverses, which we were finally able to play and experience not long ago in our Discord server. We haven't had many gaming sessions in a while during the streaming hiatus, but this was quite literally the best gaming session we've had in months. On first glance, Multiverses kinda looks like a Smash clone, and in a lot of ways it is, at least in the sense of is Platform Fighter, but unlike previous Platform Fighters that have come and unfortunately gone, it seems like Multiverses just might have what it takes to stick around longer than its predecessors. While other games failed to make a foothold in the gaming industry, that was due to a myriad of reasons, some of which were completely avoidable had they did a little of their own stars alignment. But here's four reasons why Multiverses is here to stay. The first reason we think it's here to stay is, like Smash, Multiverses has the diverse IPs behind it to really drive it forward and make a name for itself in the industry. When contemplating what characters can or cannot be in Smash, many people have their own ideas and theories on what validates or invalidates a potential candidate for the Gilded roster, and Nintendo keeps things pretty close to the chest on that front, making the fervent guessing all the more intense. However, with Multiverses, while it may not have its background purely rooted in gaming, what it does have is a large swath of IPs to pull from, and when you really look into the nitty gritty of what Warner Brothers owns or has close working ties with, it really does feel like anything is possible. As hilarious as having a video game featuring the likes of Minecraft Steve and Sephiroth, we get to experience another game with just as ridiculous crossovers like LeBron James, Rick and Morty, and Wonder Woman. By contrast, there is nothing really that mind blowing about a game featuring Helga G. Pataki and Cat Dog as an example from Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl. It's neat and kind of funny, and there are some standout characters such as Toastman or Nigel. Thornberry, but the luster wears off fast. Whether or not that is the fault of Nickelodeon's strong kid-oriented branding and direction, first placing itself firmly in the TV industry back in the 90s is anyone's guess, but when you have essentially a mascot fighter to put in any characters within your legal or financial grasp, you need to make the most of it. And this brings us right up to our second point. The memeing potential and staying power of the predecessors to multiverses was comparatively zero. In this day and age, when you are trying to get a new game off the ground against an established behemoth like Smash, you need all the help you can get. While it's easier said than done, you do that by striking a balance between quality with well thought out characters and movesets, and then you slather that with a thick layer of healthy memeage. This both helps get the word out through memes across social media while still providing enough substance for the growing player base to sink their teeth into after the initial virality wears off. In short, get eyes on your product and then actually have a product worth consuming. Speaking of consuming, one way that Multiverses really sets itself apart from the competition is simply because of the fact that it's free. Free-to-play games today are nothing like they were back in the 2000s or even early 2010s. With each passing year, more and more games are coming out that are able to rake in the millions. Games like Multiverses, now commonly referred to as live services, have evolved or arguably devolved alongside growing alternative recurring revenue generation. With live service games like Multiverses living and dying on the concurrent active player base, gamers don't know if spending that $60 or $70 is going to be worth it because if the servers are ever shut down, you're out of your money. But having your game free right out of the gate eliminates a massive hurdle for gamers who even have a passing curiosity because Batman said something funny in the game and they saw it on a TikTok or something. Multiverses, of course, makes up for being free by having a lot of your typical live service microtransactions too. You've got battle passes, multiple currencies, multiple avenues of progression, and a rotating roster of free to play characters every couple of weeks. Whether or not you want to whale it up is up to you, but you technically can enjoy the game as a free-to-play player just fine. They even allow you to play as any character locally, which is a really nice feature. Multiverses still has a ways to go, whether it's improving its online, letting two people play locally together against others online, or simply having a bigger roster, but when it's free and cross-platform, it's like, why not give it a try, especially if you have even a passing interest in platform fighters. While we've mentioned a lot of points about how the game is presented, one thing that cannot be overlooked and potentially the most important aspect of any fighting game is, of course, the gameplay. Is Multiverses just a flash-in-the-pan meme game made by out-of-touch devs pushed by a massive corporation, or is it an actually good game? Well, we think the gameplay is solely responsible for that. Multiverses is unique in its gameplay despite being a platform fighter because of its emphasis and focus on team play. You can absolutely play this game in a 1v1 format or as a free-for-all slugfest, and it holds up just fine. But Multiverses really flexes its gameplay muscles when you add two more players to the mix. 
Now, we may be a bit biased as a couple who always has someone to play with 99.9% .9 of the time, but Multiverses really emphasizes team play through not just traditional on-the-fly combos, but also baked into each of the characters' movesets as well. Now, we haven't played every character, nor have we seen every character in action, but there are at least a few ways that you can assist your teammate defensively or offensively through the use of grappling hooks or through various perks that can give you or your partner an extra edge in the fight. These handful of simple mechanics can make or break a team and their synergy beyond simply having a good comp. Truly understanding the space that you take as well as your teammate and your opponents lends itself to some great gamer moments, whether it is pushing the offensive and getting a cheeky kill together, or literally saving the life of your teammate from certain death. Couple that with trying to play around your team's or your opponent's team's perks keeps you on your toes as you try it for setups while trying to deny theirs instead of relying on a traditional team attack mechanic. Anyway, these are our first impressions and we are very much looking forward to seeing how this game improves and develops over time, whether that be more characters, stages, or improvements to the game structure overall. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Multiverses too in the comments. Finally, we couldn't complete this review without thanking What a Shane for inspiring us to write it and a huge shout out to him, Hypersilver, YT, Kessler's Arcade, and Uber Rare for playing with us recently in our Discord. Thanks for watching. We're Nushindoza, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. We also live stream three nights a week in addition to posting videos, so feel free to stop by and say hello.